Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to go on an exploration to a system of 51 Pegasus. This system is famous because this is where we've discovered the first ever exoplanet around a main sequence star. You're going to discover what the star and what this planet looks like, and you're going to find out what we'll learn about it over the past several decades. Anyway, let's escape Earth, and welcome to What The Math. So back in 1995, a scientist by the name of Michael Mayer and another scientist by the name of Didier Quellos of University of Geneva published an article in the magazine, uh, in the Journal of Nature, describing what to, we know today as a very large gas giant orbiting around a star known as 51 Pegasi, a star that's only about 50 light years away from us. Let's actually locate it first. Let's take a look at it using our telescope feature in Space Engine. And we're going to see what this star looks like. Uh, this star is in constellation of Pegasus, and therefore it's known as Pegasi. Uh, it's also known as Helvetios or HIP113357 or HD 217014. So using our super micro or um, super telescope, that is not microscope, we're going to be taking a look at what seems to be, huh, there you go, there's that star, suddenly visible. Now we don't really see if there's anything around it, we don't really see the planet, but if I accelerate time we might be able to see a bit of a wobble. And this is essentially what helped these scientists discover that there is something happening here. There is definitely something orbiting around the star. Um, using what's known as the Doppler spectroscopy, also known as radial velocity method, about which I've talked about previously, and will also describe in more detail in one of the future videos, they were able to detect that there's actually an object very close to the star orbiting in an orbit that's a lot closer than, than the orbit of Mercury. Now we might be able actually to see this object a little better if we decrease luminosity here, and you can kind of see that there's something happening there, there's something moving around this star, even though it's very difficult to see because it's so far away at 50 light years away from us. If I decrease time a little bit, you might be able to see it a little bit better. There's definitely motion there. And so that's what they were able to see, and this was back in 1995. Uh, this is the first such object discovered um, using a main sequence star. Now, prior to that, we did discover another set of planets around a pulsar. Uh, these actually do have really cool names, and I've talked about them as well in one of the previous videos. Uh, these are around a star or a pulsar known as Lich. Let's actually very briefly take a look at it, because this was uh, technically the first ever discovered planetary system with these three stars orbiting around it. But this is not a main sequence star, this is a pulsar, so it's not really the same. And these uh, have really cool names such as Jogger, uh, Poltergeist, and the last one here is known as Phobitor. Now, check out the video I made about these previously, something like a year ago, but this is not the star we're going to visit today. We're going to 51 Pegasi. And so let's fly to that star. Uh, this star is actually also unofficially known as uh, Bellerophon and later officially named as the Medium. Uh, Bellerophon was the figure of Greek mythology. It's a person who rode winged horse Pegasus and because this is in, a, in Pegasus constellation, this is why originally scientists used to refer to this as uh, Bellerophon and then it was renamed the Medium because uh, the word uh, the Medium is Latin for half. And that's actually a re reference to the planet here. The planet is known as the medium because, you can actually see the names here, uh, because it's about half of mass of Jupiter, specifically 0.46 masses of Jupiter. Now let's actually zoom into it. Let's take a look at this planet in a little bit more detail because it's actually very, very interesting. So first of all, this is, uh, when we discovered this planet, it sort of threw us into a bit of a, an unknown territory because it redefines how we thought about planetary formation. Prior to discovering this planet, we never knew that there was such things as hot Jupiters, basically these very large gas giants, very close to stars, 
and very, very hot. This one here is something like 800 degrees Celsius right now, possibly even hotter. And uh, this redefines how we thought about the formation of all solar systems, because we then started discovering more and more of these objects. And what we've learned about this planet in the last uh, few decades is that, well, first of all, we know uh, its orbital period now, we know pretty much most of the parameters for this planet. So we know that it's about um, half the mass of Jupiter. It's a little bit bigger than Jupiter because it's actually very hot. So it expanded because it's a gas giant. It orbits with a four day period uh, at a speed of about 136 kilometers per second. And its um, temperature in the upper atmosphere is about 1265 degrees Kelvin or about 1000 degrees Celsius. Now, um, we originally thought this was actually a brown dwarf that was just a little too close to the star uh, because it didn't make sense that this was a planet. Back then, scientists did not realize that planets can exist so close to stars. But then we had to redefine our definition of solar uh, formation and we realized that there were quite a lot of these high Jupiters out there. It just our solar system doesn't seem to have one. Now, it's uh, massive enough that it can easily maintain atmosphere even though it's so close to its star. So normally, uh, you can, you can kind of see that it's actually losing a lot of material here. Uh, normally, a star would strip um, a planet of atmosphere relatively easy, but because this planet is so massive, it maintains quite a lot of atmosphere because its mass is like 180 masses of Earth. And um, we think that inside of its atmosphere, you can even find things like silicates and rocks because it's so hot that it would actually vaporize some of the rocks that might be inside the core of the planet. And because it's tidally locked to the same side, and because this planet is tidally locked, it's always facing this with the same side to the star. So one side here might be kind of perpetually cold and one side perpetually hot, but because there is so much atmosphere, it probably mixes the temperature pretty well. So, oh no, it's a pretty interesting object, very unusual object, and um, most recently we were even e able to detect actual visual light from this star, specifically in 2017. We actually saw the light reflected from the surface here, which helped us determine the exact mass of this planet, helped us determine that it's very high in um, reflectivity, also known as albedo, and we were also able to study its atmosphere in more detail and tw in 2017 discovered that it even has water in its atmosphere which is actually very unusual right now in space engine it doesn't but in reality there's even water there which also suggests that maybe this planet was actually formed somewhere farther away um or received a collision from an object that had water in it uh, so we don't really know how to explain the fact that there's water here so this unusual very strange but very cool planet discovered back in 1995 specifically like 22 years um before i made this video uh, started a cascade of discoveries later on and we've discovered many such planets afterwards and uh the fact that we were able to find such a cool method of discovering them definitely makes um, this discovery really unusual and just to kind of give you an idea of how we discovered this because these two objects uh, actually kind of orbit around one another, there is a Berry Center around here inside the star somewhere. So this star actually kind of wobbles back and forth every time the planet orbits around it. Not a lot, but just a little bit. And w when it actually wobbles, uh, the light that it sends toward our planet Earth changes due to the Doppler effect. It actually becomes either a little bit more red shifted or blue shifted. And so the scientists were able to detect that and they were able to see that there is definitely something causing these uh, Doppler effects. You can also actually see the shifts in the, the star's wobble if you look at it from this side, but you have to look very, very carefully and you have to look for a very long time because if we look long enough, you'll see that the star actually does wobble just a little bit every time the planet orbits around it. And so that's essentially how we were able to discover this and something like 600 more planets as of 2017 using the same type of method known as Doppler spectroscopy. But anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to show you the first ever uh, discovered planet around a main sequence star. A star and a planet that will definitely 
help us understand the universe, the formation of our own solar system, and the formation of other planets a lot better. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else that you didn't know before. Anyway, let's escape the system, look at it from a distance once again, and go to the outer solar system and outer galaxy. See you guys later, see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.